a basket and it looks huge, praise God. And it's going to, yes, one of our members, a male or female today, who knows? Today, yes, we are going with a female. Look at this basket and clap your hands. But today she is with us. You know who that is, right? She is with us and we are happy that she stayed. What would we do without our mothers in the house? Put your hands together for our missionary Samuel. Please come, praise the Lord. Our grandson Scott balling out and I didn't say the name yet. I don't know what the trouble is down there. Praise God. God bless you, missionary Samuel. That you stayed with us, that you came a part of our family. Praise the Lord Jesus. God bless you. This is so nice. The nurse, Sir, you are stepping down. Praise the Lord. She's coming to give us that.
that they're living in, they are okay with having just white folks coming in and being a part of that community. They said they don't want to have anybody who is mixed, praise God, of any other race that you have, a black woman and a white man coming in, or a white woman and a black man. They said the races should not be mixed. Everyone should stick to their own race. And when the interviewer asked the individual, which was, praise God, God, as somebody who was a part of the city council, it means this was somebody who was in position of authority. When they asked her, why do you believe that people should not be mingled and mixed? The woman responded, because the Bible said it that way, that we should not be mixed. And she said, the Bible told us that God made Adam and Eve. And there we realize that they have the idea and the concept that Adam and Eve were white. And there is a separation which brings forth a superiority in terms of white races. And that's why we have what are known as white supremacists. Because they believe that their race is superior to every other race that exists. And we have to understand this, that there are many that live in this life who sees themselves in a superior way to others. If we look at your workplace, if somebody is a bit more educated than somebody, then they have a feeling within themselves that they are better than somebody else who is not as educated. We find that you might live in a ghetto. Can I talk to you just a bit? And even though you live in a ghetto, if somebody has a television and electricity, city, that the one who has the television and the electricity feels that they are better than their neighbor because they don't have electricity, but you're both living in a ghetto. Can I, can I, can I talk to you just a bit? And so many persons want to always be first. There is nobody who wants to be second. There is nobody who wants to know that they are in second place because everybody that's first believes that this is it. And as I was just talking a while ago, praise God, my mind went back to yesterday. Praise God. It was not a part of my message, but my message when I preach. Uh, can I talk to you just a bit? Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody wants to know where they come out on top. Everybody wants to be number one. And if you are not number one, then you get upset. Can I talk to the church just a bit? The truth is that nobody remembers those who are in second place. Everybody remembers who won the match. Am I talking to the church? If I should ask each match that you say both run in and I ask you, uh, God Almighty, the year uh, when he won and what race it was, uh, the man will tell us uh, that you saying came first and he won at the Olympics, he won at the World Championships. Uh, but if I ask you who came in second, that there are many who are going to have a problem to tell me who came in second. If I go into the football arena and I ask who won the World Cup a few years ago and a few years before that, there are many who are going to tell me who won the World Cup. But if I ask who came in second place, there are many who are not going to be able to tell me who came in second because there is a mentality that the first is is the best and whatsoever is on top it means that it is the best thing what can i tell you i love how god sets things because he does not choose his or deals with things according to man's concepts or according to man's perceptions the bible literally tells us that the first shall be the last and the last and be the first. Uh, Jesus says uh, that the least in the kingdom uh, is actually the greatest. Can I talk to you just a bit? Uh, but then when we look at diamond, uh, where can a diamond be found? Uh, it can be found uh, very deep uh, in the earth, uh, very deep uh, in dirt, uh, very deep uh, in muck and in mud. Uh, can I tell somebody today that there is a diamond, but a diamond is not something that you can readily find on the surface. 
can be found very deep. We can be found in the earth. And so you can be seen readily for who you are. But can I tell you, my brother or my sister, that you are diamonds, but you are just very you're a diamond, but you're just covered with dirt. You're a diamond, but you're just covered with mud. There's coming a time when the diamond is going to be revealed. And then when the dirt is moved, oh, when the mud is moved, when the mud is removed, then there's a beautiful diamond that is about to shine. Why is that? And if they put a price on it, it's very expensive. I don't know about you today, but if you are in the muck and the mire, if you are buried and not being able to be seen, can I tell you that God has chosen you? God has made something precious on the inside. Not everybody is going to see the words. Not everybody is going to see back away. But God is getting ready to take you out of the dirt. God is getting ready to let you shine. God is getting ready to clean you up. The Jews and the Samaritans were cousins, but there was a bitter rivalry between them. The Samaritans went into the Jewish temple and they bled bones of their bodies and sprinkled all over the temple, defiling the temple of the Jews. And the Jews, in retaliation, went into the Samaritan villages and killed dozens of them. And so the hatred had been there all this time to the point when Jesus came and he met a woman and I talked to the church which was a woman of Samaria. Can I talk to you? The woman of Samaria, when Jesus spoke to her, she said, How is it that you are a Jew who talk to me, which is a Samaritan? Now we agree. Me and a friend, we are talking to talk. You shall pass and walk on the business. But
not can I talk to the church when we are blessed with the man seated in the southern of the Mahomia. We have one son when he gives some milk with an advice as a young girl. When I do well, yes, I wish. You can not say, I will have a man foot. You can try to not push your big foot down. There we go, I look at you. Can I talk to the church? Jesus, when we look at him, he was not an handsome individual. So when they looked upon him, they could not say, This was the king, this was God in flesh. Because when they look at him, he never looked like this. Can I tell somebody that everyone was ever been told that you're ugly? That everyone was been told that you're not handsome? For everyone was been told that you're not good looking? Can I tell you something? If you're baptized in a Jesus name and kill you with the words, say, well, I'm going to read it to you, my papa, from the fear of my daddy. Can I talk to the church? Let's find some other things. The handsome look, the beautiful look, means that's what Jesus is in. It never hands on. It never wants him. We will all warn you.